Does the thought of meal planning and prep for our new busier lives make you want to shut the curtains and go back into quarantine? Well, hold the door because in today's episode, I have Hungry Girls Lynn Betancourt here coming to the rescue to help us make it easy and dare I say, enjoyable. So stay tuned and get ready. Did you know that our struggle with weight doesn't start with the food on your plate or get fixed in the gym? 80% of our weight struggle is mental. That's right. The key to unlocking long-term weight release and management begins in your mind. Hi there, I'm Rita Black. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, weight loss expert, best-selling author, and the creator of the Shift Weight Mastery Process. And not only have I helped thousands of people over the past 20 years achieve long-term weight mastery, I am also a former weight struggler, carb addict, and binge eater. And after two decades of failed diets and fad weight loss programs, I lost 40 pounds with the help of hypnosis. Not only did I release all that weight, I have kept it off for 25 years. Enter the Thin Thinking Podcast where you too will learn how to remove the mental roadblocks that keep you struggling. I'll give you the thin thinking tools, skills, and insights to help you develop the mindset you need, not only to achieve your ideal weight, but to stay there long term and live your best life. Hello, everyone, and welcome in. It's that back to school time again here in California. We start a little early. I think in some states you start earlier than us, but in a lot of places you don't start till after Labor Day. Um, and I don't know why they start it because, you know, it's hot and the kids don't want to go back yet. It still feels like summer. But anyway, that's what we're doing. So um, I uh, need someone to commiserate with. My son is heading back, and I have been scrambling to pull life together because he's going back to the live, live school. And that means waking him up in the morning earlier than he's been used to because he's been getting up at 9 a.m., rolling out of bed, you know, rolling over and turning on his screen and and getting going. We're talking, you know, a 16-year-old folks, so they don't rise and shine so easily. So that means, yeah, getting him up, you know, he's got to put clothes on other than sweats, uh, you know, give him a lunch, um, you know, even though he's a junior in high school, he should be doing this all himself, right? Well, we'll see what happens, but we're scrambling. We are scrambling, I will admit it, and I'm not ashamed about it. We're just scrambling. And even if you don't have a kid heading back to school, a lot of us are going to be heading back to life, to the office. A lot of my clients say September is, you know, the month that they're heading back. Um, If you haven't headed back already, the world is coming back and getting busy and we're in time crunches again and making it hard to eat healthfully. And for many people, the thought of meal planning just makes them want to head to the drive through So that is why I am super excited to share my interview with Lynn Betancourt. Lynn and I have known each other for years, and we get into this in our interview. But Lynn is uh, the right-hand woman of Lisa Lillian, who is Hungry Girl. If you guys don't know Hungry Girl and the Hungry Girl website and the Hungry Girl books, um, check it out because she is a great resource for awesome low-calorie recipes. Um, She's really evolved over the years into more organic and healthy eating, but she's always had like a low-calorie healthy option for, um, you know, those comfort foods. So she, you know, and she's hilarious. Uh, She's got a great newsletter. Um, She does grocery lists. She really makes um, eating healthy, eating low calorie, super easy. Always thinking of fun desserts, even cocktails. Um, I just find her an amazing resource for weight mastery. And Lynn has been a big part of Lisa Lillian's success, and Lynn herself creates recipes for 
um, her and also, uh, you know, has clients and helps them be healthy as well. So, and Lynn is a mom of two young children. So she's she's got it all going on. So she's uh, going to be a great resource for us. And she's going to be giving us some strategy for planning and preparing healthy meals so that we can get or stay healthy despite um, the fact that we are going to be busier and more time crunched. So let's get started. Hello and welcome everybody. I have the amazing and vivacious Lynn Betancourt here with me. Lynn Betancourt and I go way back, which we will talk about a little bit. Uh, But Lynn is a huge part of the Hungry Girl brand. She is a recipe developer and the head of nutrition at Hungry Girl and has helped Lisa Lillian, uh, you know, over the years, I would consider you her right hand man, but you know, I don't know. You're, you're probably humble. You probably don't think that, but I would definitely say like, maybe like if she had maybe her light right leg. (laughs) Okay. Her right leg, man, lady, uh, (laughs) partner. Okay. And then she is also a star, a diamond, uh, coach uh, with the Beach Body, and we will talk about Beach Body because we both have an affinity for Beach Body. But she is a coach there, and she helps her clients with nutrition and fitness, and really being a buddy in their journey of uh, weight release, weight mastery, getting fit and healthy, and feeling good about themselves. And Lynn will also have a great offer, um, a free offer for us. Um, at the end of our conversation here, because um, Lynn, it offers so much value. So welcome, welcome to the show, Lynn. Thank nice you so much you. for having me. I, I know this isn't going to be a video. I know we're just talking, uh, but you look fantastic. Thank you. Um, you look so healthy and vibrant. And uh, we were just talking before we turned on the record- recording that Lynn, uh, when I met Lynn, she was living in Los Angeles. You had moved here from Boston, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And and you were just, it was before you were married. It was before you had kids. How long had you been working for Hungry Girl at that point when I met you? Um, a few years. I want to say like three years. Yeah. But now I'm into, I think, almost 14 and a half years. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. I remember, are they, are they still running Hungry Girl out of Los Angeles, out of the same place that they were running it when I went there and picked up? Swag. No, so they actually have an amazing Hungry Land. It's, it's labeled Hungry Land headquartered oh now. It's a an amazing like building that has two kitchens and an incredible area to do all their food photography. It's right. Amazing. I guess that yeah, like I mean, when it was a pretty, I mean, it was a nice condo, but yeah, because I know she now has like a magazine and and book after book and and. TV show, so I guess you couldn't run that out of a condo. <laughs> That'd be harder. Yeah. You would need a Hungry Girl Land. Okay, and it must have, it must be really fascinating uh, helping a brand grow and being such a huge part of like because you guys have gone through the years. You've gone through a lot a lot of incarnations, like getting more organic and getting healthier, and then you know flowing with the evolution of the food evolution, like the, you know, getting healthy, what that looks like has changed a lot in 14 years. Would you say? Absolutely. I would, I've been around since before the first cookbook, which is really crazy. We have 14 cookbooks. Uh Um, And it really has, it's evolved so much as a brand. I've really loved being a part of it because I think even as like a consumer, because I am also somebody who is conscious with what I eat and I've had lots of life changes over the last 14 years. And for me, it's been just really fun to be a part of and see how like, Oh, it's not Oh wait, (laughs) everything was low carb for a while there. Everything was low fat. And also in that education of ourselves, we're educating a gigantic audience of being able to fuel yourself with really amazing, good foods for you and understanding that balance. It's been great. What I love about the hungry, hungry girl, like all, you know, just like the, I guess I would say the, what the brand represents is fun. You know, like that eating healthy can be fun. Eating even low calorie can be fun. And I think what hungry girl, um, evokes or or promotes is this idea of being creative and being like that I think we get into that chicken and broccoli head with like being good on a diet and I think 
you know, you guys just blew that all out of the water because you open up one of your cookbooks or you open up a magazine or you open up any, you go to the Hungry Girl website, it still exists. Like, you, they, does she still do newsletters? Because I know her newsletters were really like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's just like pushes the envelope of like, no, this can be super creative. You can eat low calorie, it can taste like comfort food. Like, I mean, what I loved was like, you can have the comfort foods and still, and you have been at the the backbone of that because you've been developing a lot of these amazing recipes. Um, I have been extremely honored to be part of the nutrition team and to be a recipe developer for so many years. Just... I will say our recipes are delicious. They really is. They are. Oh my gosh. It's so good. (laughs) Like you don't have to, I think one of my favorite things that Lisa says is, you know, you can eat delicious food and still fit into your pants. (laughs) That is a hundred percent accurate. I love that idea of like being a scientist, figuring out what works for you, kind of understanding, just having some ownership too. But it's also nice to kind of like loosen the reins and go, I'm just going to pick one of, you know, one of the recipes that already exists and, and see how that works. Really what great is for getting your whole family involved too. Right. I, yeah, I know. And definitely I'm sure having kids has changed your perspective, perspective on perspective, sorry, perspective on food and and what we're going to get into is planning and preparing. But before I do, I have one question. So what is your favorite recipe that you've developed over the years? What is the thing you think? I mean, I'm sure there are many, but like if one popped to the mind of you, what would that be? Oh, I definitely should have known that. <laughs> okay, tell me five. Tell me five and don't make it so hard to have to say. Oh, and it's so hard because I sometimes I don't even remember what I even started, but um we had done a, one of my favorite things to do earlier on was take recipes from certain restaurants and kind of like revamp them. Oh, okay. Um, and I want to say it's Olive Garden that has a buffalo chicken, mm. like it's like over noodles. So I created a swap for that uh, many years ago. And of course, all, everything that um, when we're doing recipe development, our team, there's a handful of us that do it. And everything goes through like this amazing channel and it gets tested a bunch of times in the kitchen. And Lisa gets her taste buds on every single thing that goes through. She Mm. stands on with a lot of the development as well, um, which is why everything tastes so good. (laughs) She has a very amazing universal palate. So that would, that was definitely one of um, my favorites, but also an enchilada chicken soup that was once inspired by somebody that wrote in and we were in the kitchen and we tested it and made it like, so good. It's something that I used to wow um, my now husband when I first met him. I was like, it's pumpkin and soup. And he was like, this sounds terrible. And I'm like, you're going to love it. Um, and I also accidentally discovered how great like pumpkin and um, butternut squash can be as like a refried bean swap. By oh, accident. Like, no. I, I would have never thought of that. Well, I, I, I was in the test kitchen doing something. Uh-huh. Uh, I was actually about to shoot that because I used to do photos when I lived in LA. Um, and I was trying to like get these enchiladas and we ran out of the filling. So I just decided to throw it in. I seasoned it up and made it look like it was what it was supposed to be. Generally, we only shoot exactly what you're going to get. But I needed a second enchilada and filled it the way I could. And we we took a bite of it and we were like, oh my gosh, it's amazing to be able to use seasoning to make vegetables taste like other things. So it's, that is it's cool. been a really fun journey. You've heard it here first, uh, the, <laughs> the butternut refried beans. Um, I have made that enchilada soup and I have to say it is pretty awesome. Yeah, you wouldn't think like pumpkin, what pumpkin can do, but pumpkin is a pretty amazing, versatile vegetable. It is. So, so yeah, now I want to get into that. You've got two little kids. Yours are five and six. Mm-hmm. Mine is 15. And as moms, but even as not moms, but people who are healthy, right? We, I mean, we have to plan ahead. And I know a lot of people hate the idea of planning, right? Like it just seems like so unglamorous and so unfun. But so we're here today to make it glamorous and fun and easy, right, Lynn? And what do you feel like um, is the biggest value of planning? Like in your mind, like... Well, there's that saying that if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And that's probably <laughs> the most accurate statement when it comes to having 
a plan when it comes to eating. Um, but I, I mean, it doesn't have to be really hard. So I think a lot of us make it more complicated than it needs to be. And a lot of people feel like, they, they get very overwhelmed by all the options out there and keeping it simple is really helpful. And also just being honest with yourself. If you are somebody that hates cooking, then you have to factor that in when you're going to do some meal planning, you want to make sure you have some shortcuts or just some easy meals that you can kind of repeat. If you're somebody that will never repeat meals, then you have to kind of, you know, factor that into your meal plan too. Um, do you think, can I ask you, do you think there's a lot of people who don't repeat meals? I mean, I think most people repeat meals, but do you I th- personally have no problem repeating meals, but I've been a coach for more than six years right. now and worked with people all over the map when it comes to food planning. And I know people who, has, who are married to people that will not repeat meals or yeah. they themselves need it to be constantly different. And there are ways to do that. So, um, for example, If you're going to repeat meals, there's two ways. There's a lot of ways to do it. But one, if you're making a big, say, a casserole dish and you're like, I don't want to eat this again right now, but it was really good. Make enough so that you can freeze a serving or two. Right. And you'll have it next week or two weeks from now. And you didn't do the work. Again. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just get to eat, you know, do the work once, eat twice. Um, and it doesn't have to be in the same week. I would just highly recommend if you're not going to eat it within five days, pretty much that's like the go-to rule for me. If you're not going to eat the leftovers within five days, pop it in the freezer. Yeah. Um, so that way it'll still be good. But another option is changing out the protein, like keeping or so change out the protein. Like if you're doing salads, like jar salads, mason jar salads are really great. You can do tuna one day chicken one day and shrimp another day and just slightly season it differently. Yeah. But have the base of your salad be prepared. So you did all of that at once, oh. or you can have like a slow cooker where you've done a shredded like chicken or a shredded, you know, other type of, you know, protein, and then have that be used in a bunch of different ways throughout the week. So you could have that be your lunch every day, but one day is tacos, one day is over salad. I one love day that. Soup. So there's a lot of different ways that you can work within what your limits are time-wise, what your ability is <laughs> cooking wise, um, and your taste buds. So like for me, I love everything Mexican. So I can eat Mexican and also Buffalo flavored anything basically every day of the week. That would be fine with me, but that's not true of everyone. Right. So, can I ask you, Lynn, Buffalo, what is, what is the seasoning behind Buffalo? Like, is it red hot seasoning or what? Red is- hot? Yeah. I mean, I live from Frank's red hot. That's my preferred your hot sauce, the buffalo sauce. Um, it's it's the best. Do you add it's anything natural? Do you is add that? anything to it, or is that it? Generally, I can do it with just that. Sometimes I'll make like a little sauce. I I generally don't eat that much dairy anymore. I'm pretty uh, plant based dairy at this point. <laughs> That's even a good term. I think you know what I mean. So I will add sometimes like a little bit of like either coconut oil to it or a little like vegan butter. Uh-huh. Um, but generally. I can actually just do that sauce. If I put a little of that sauce on my eggs in the morning, if I oh, if I want a little heat, like that works for me too. Oh yeah, no, I love I love that too. So oh cool, okay good. I'm sorry I interrupted you. You were That's saying okay. you love Mexican and yeah. buffalo, <laughs> um, and I think just you know knowing your flavor flavor profiles, knowing your family, and you know my kids are still pretty young and. At this point, one of them has a lot has like is a gluten allergy and the other one doesn't. And one has like a dairy sensitivity, the other one doesn't. Wow. So a lot of times I'm still even if I was gonna make one dish, it very rarely checks off all the boxes. So right now my kids, even if they are getting tacos and everybody's getting tacos. I'm still kind of making some modifications for their meals. So that's something that I have to bring to the table and that I'm aware of. Not every family will make a separate dish for their kids, but I am because of their specific needs at this time. Right. And, you know, I think, you know, part of it is just knowing whatever your personal dynamic is around food. And once you know that, you can look at your schedule ahead. You know, how many days are you out of the, you know, out of the house this week? Do you have soccer during, you know, during uh, your week on Wednesday and also a game on Saturday. How much does that affect your schedule? Do you have to have ready to go things on those days? Because you know, you're going to end up at a fast food place if you don't, Um, or 
you know, you don't want to end up with not enough food. So you do want to make sure that when you're looking at your schedule, can you repeat meals? How can you make things work? Maybe more than once if that's possible. Um, you know, is there a night where your family can kind of help cook or does it have to be kind of made ahead? And what do you have to do on the weekend to kind of prepare? So just once you do it a couple of times, you have a really good idea of what your schedule and your life looks like. Now I'll do it like once a month where I can see, all right, generally, because I am a parent, generally most things fall on the same nights. You know, we always have a practice on Wednesday, right? We always have a game on Saturday. And that's the same for the whole month. So I kind of know once I've looked at it once, the next four weeks are going to be a similar style. And, you know, I might just have one type of protein that's ready for lunches, or I might have one type of make ahead breakfast, because maybe that's what it is when you're trying to get to school, because I know that's coming up right now. So I want to make sure my kids have something good to eat. And that I have something good to eat when we're running out the door. Um, because the last thing I want to do is come back home and then be starving and then eat all their leftover right, whatever. cereal or right. you know, waffles, whatever I made them that day. So just being prepared and understanding like your actual schedule and being okay with the fact that it's a learning curve, that you'll get better at it the more you do it. And that's pretty much the same as everything, right? Like the more you practice, the better you get. I want to ask you, well, one thing I want to say for those of you who are still skeptical about planning ahead, because I think the what the resistance points our, our brain will throw up is, you know, we're not used to it. And, and our brain, you know, if it's not used to it, it wants to say the same. But I think not planning. I mean, how much time, honestly, Lynn, do you think it takes to do what you're saying? Like if you're sitting down, when do you sit down and plan your meals? Like, is it? On a Sunday? Is it on a Monday? Like, when do you do your meal planning? So my personal secret to success, what has worked for me, Uh is spreading things out because I am a mom to littles and I never know like what kind of, I mean, granted, they're a little bit older now, but generally you don't know when your kids are going to be in a bad mood or when all of a sudden something's going to happen. So I spread out my planning over three days. So what I do on Fridays is I look ahead at the week. And I see kind of like what I'm going to need meal wise. And I usually jot down like ideas for what I want to eat for that week. And then I leave it alone. I don't do anything with it. That takes me less than 30 minutes. Easy. A lot of times for me, it's like 15 minutes if that. Mm -hmm. Um, On Saturday, that's when I set my grocery list up on my, because I know that a lot of people have come to love this part of the, the, you know, pandemic life that we had is we would have groceries to pick up, you know, or have delivered to our house. So that's what I utilize. I've been utilizing it for a long time. I go online. It allows me to see what my sales are. So I feel like I'm spending less money. I'm not picking up extra things that I don't need because I'm hungry at the store or because it looks good. Um, And I set up that grocery order on Saturday mornings, usually for pickup on Sunday morning or sometimes Saturday afternoon, just so I have it. So um, you order it and you, you do it online and then you go to the grocery store and they have it ready for you? Yes. Um, so I, if I do on Saturday morning, it'll be, it could be ready as early as the afternoon on Saturday for me to pick up where I am. And a lot of times, you know, if I've heard one of the things, the pushbacks that I've heard on doing that is people don't like the produce that's chosen. Mm -hmm. I feel very good about the store that I go to. I love the produce I pick. I very, very rarely have an issue with it, but my suggestion and what I have done when I wasn't using the store I'm using now is I would put everything else on the order and have that ready to go. And then when I would go to the store to pick up my order, I would just run in and get only the produce that I didn't get, check out with the produce and then go pick up the order right. at the side of the building. So every, I didn't have to go through any other aisles, all the stuff that I don't really need to be a part of, you know, that's the same, no matter what it is. I was just picking out my produce. Right. So that's another option. That's it it ends up taking you about 20 minutes longer, but I, I have found too, that it's really nice to be able to just do all this ahead and you save the time. And I know a lot of people hate grocery shopping. So let well, somebody else I do think it. the thing with produce now is like when I really honestly think about buying produce, most of what I'm buying is in packages. It's not, you know what I mean? Like cauliflower is all chunked up it's not like I'm buying a head of cauliflower and I'm picking it out like my favorite it's just like cauliflower pieces broccoli pieces um romaine lettuce is pre-packaged like so much of what you're buying isn't contingent upon your picking it out I mean like tomatoes are fruit are but 
Yeah, yeah it depends too. Um, Cause that's one of the ways to save money is there are still heads, you know, that you can get of cauliflower loose at a lot of stores or at least where I am. Oh. And the same thing with like, you know, yes, you can buy zucchini spirals already done, or you can buy the zucchini, you know, fresh, but again, generally like, I know like strawberries, yes, they're in a package, but sometimes they don't look great. <laughs> that's, yeah. I think that's the only time I've ever, I, I tend to do my produce when they're off season, when they're in season, everything is pretty beautiful. So right. right, you know, right now we're at the end of the summer and everything still for the most part looks pretty good, but we're going to start entering those months where you might want to just pop in and get your produce. And that's, and that's a decision that's up to you. Like if, if you feel good about the produce they pick, then you're good. Um, and then Sunday, what I'll do is, is I'll look at what I need to prep. If there's anything I need to cut ahead, I like to, depending on the you know the season. If I'm doing salads, which I'm still in summer mode, you know at the end of the summer mode right now, I will still do jar salads, mason jar salads, which are great because you can actually prep those ahead. You know, you just put the protein. Tell on the me bottom. about a mason jar salad because I don't. That's a, you're in North Carolina. That sounds very southern, but I. Uh, oh. <laughs> I've been doing them for years. I feel like I started, and maybe it has been. You, yeah. I think you, I've, I've seen it in Hungry Girl. Like I've, I've seen yeah. that mason jar. They're beautiful. But what they do you are. do? You buy some mason jars. So, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I guess I do live in the South now. So I've had mason jars for a while, but it, you put at the bottom, you know, whatever the sauce or the dressing is that you have. Okay. And you put your protein generally there. If I'm using a packet of tuna. I will wait to put that on just as a heads up, but then you use your like chunky vegetables. So, you know, cucumbers, tomatoes, those sorts of things. Um, and then you can add like your, your cheese. If you want to add cheese, feta is really great for that or your strawberries, things like that. That kind of salad right there just sounds delicious. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, that's where you put your spinach or your romaine or whatever greens that you're using. So that way it stays as far away from the wet, dressing sure, that makes and sense. then you seal it and it actually stays all week so I used to I know this is gonna sound funny there used to be a salad club where I lived in Savannah and we would get together everybody would bring a bunch of ingredients we'd throw things into our jars and we'd all have you know five oh, different yeah. salads. oh so, so. And so and then you like could have five salads for the week and then when you eat it do you eat how do you eat it do you take you unscrew it and put it on a plate or do you eat it out of the jar I personally would dump it into like a big bowl or a plate. Other people just shake it up. And when you shake it up there and then you can eat it out. So if you are, you know, at your office, if you're back to your office, you can go ahead and just eat it out of the jar. So you're not. Do you leave enough room at the top so that when you shake it, there's, then it all gets all shook up so that the. Yeah, I find. Yeah, I find too uh, with like lettuce. In general, it'll kind of like shift just a Double. little tiny bit. So it'll give you a little bit of room. It's not a yeah. super, it's not like a soup, you know, or it's right. really cool. Okay. I love that idea. I'm that, okay. I've learned something powerful here today <laughs> yeah. so far. Um, like well, you've uh, lots of good ideas already. Uh, so yeah, that one thing like that thought I had was it is, we are resistant to it, but I honestly think when we are not planning the chaos of not planning. Like, I think people think, oh my gosh, it takes so much time. I don't have time. I can't get my mind around it. But when you think of the chaos and the mental anxiety that not being, and then overeating or going out for, you know, like them feeling sick because you ate junky, you know, drive through food, it actually saves time. It really yeah. saves time and it saves mental anguish and even being mad at yourself, all that stuff. I mean, I, so I think what you're talking about, Lynn, like you said, it takes time, it takes preparation, but ultimately you're ahead of the game and it's so much easier at the end of the game. When you got your mason jars and you just reach in there and you get your mason jar and you shake your mason, like what could make anybody happier than that? I know. And, and it's great because when you start to get into the cooler weather, which is hopefully right around the corner for everybody, uh, you'll be right into soup season and then you can use those for soups. So, ah, I love a it. wonderful idea. I, love I know. I, uh, I will say, I mean, when you're setting yourself up for success, like that's one of the ways and it really doesn't take that much time. I that 10 to 15 minutes on, say, Friday and then Saturday, you've set up your order and then you go pick it up. It's, you know, 30 minutes, if that, and you've done it from like 
phone or wherever you do your ordering from or your your in the comfort of your home. And then Sunday prep is only as much as you want it to be. So if you want to prep overnight oats, that's something else you can do in your mason jar. And that's really easy to do. I guess I'm, I probably should be a spokesperson for mason jars at this point, (laughs) but um, I mean, whatever it is that you need to prep, sometimes casseroles prep really well. And it's just nice to have some things ready to go like that chopped vegetables, just have them ready. So they look really, really pretty in your fridge and that's what you want to go for. And having that kind of done, just takes off the pressure and just looking ahead at your week. If you're like, okay, I know we're going to be out of the house before dinner, two nights that week. If I just prep those as much as I can, and then I only have to like last minute cook them or just throw them into the oven right when I get home, makes things so much easier. Even if you don't have kids, you know, that kind of stuff just really makes a big difference. And then setting yourself up a second way, you know, not just like the pre-shopping and take care of all that, but also your, your plan B, because I think one of the things, the very humbling thing about being a parent is I think I can plan ahead. I think I can do all these things, but I'm often reminded that I am not in control of many things in my life. Thank you. to I like to blame parenthood for everything, but in reality, you know, you don't know when your husband's going to eat your leftovers that you were planning on having when that's what husbands do Lynn. they just damn leftovers. It especially happens when you have delicious recipes. (laughs) I I find all of a sudden, you know, I cooked actually a bunch of chicken this past weekend and, you know, my husband's been throwing it on every single thing that he's been eating. He's like, Oh, it's just really good. I'm like, I know, but now I'm also going to have to do it again on Wednesday. It's a slow cooker. So it's easy, but I'm like, I'll just have to do it again (laughs) because I'm going to need it to get me through the week. But, um, there's, you know, it's, it's nice to have that kind of conversation. You can also label things and say, you know, that's my lunch. Please don't eat it because I'm going to eat it on Wednesday. But having a plan B of like those frozen servings that you didn't want to eat two weeks ago, you know, that you popped in your, your freezer, those are great to have as backup. Having a frozen meal is also, you know, a good option. I just highly suggest if you are going to use a frozen meal of any kind that like you bulk it up with more vegetables. Usually there's like a ton of sauce and not a lot of content in those. You mean but like, uh, do you mean like something that is pre prepared yeah. at somebody, something else? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be frozen or even something that you picked up at the grocery store that was like pre-made that you just popped in your freezer. Um, maybe it wasn't like sold that way. It was like fresh at the time, but you're like, I just want to make sure I have, you know, some food it's nice to have. But the other thing is too, is that other part of setting yourself up for success is knowing what you're capable of and what you're not. So for example, if you are not a great cook, or if you don't have a lot of time to prep on Sundays because your Sundays are already full, Understanding that if you can get things that are pre-cut or pre-packaged, those vegetables that are already chopped for you, um, or the ready-to-eat protein like tuna, or the already cooked chicken, yes. or you know, ready-to-eat shrimp, even hard-boiled eggs, you can get a lot of different kinds of foods that are already done for you. And using that as part of like your lunches and your dinners, yes. especially if you're cooking, you know, not for a family one night. If you're just really cooking for yourself, you're it's a lot easier to do too. But having them on hand and having that kind of like plan B makes a big difference. Yeah, I agree with you that because so many, I mean, like, I don't know if you've experienced this, Lynn, but as I get older and my clients get younger, um, a lot of millennials, uh, for whatever reason, are, I mean, at least in L.A., are not cooking. They're like, they've been too busy. They never like their parents weren't cooking so they never learned you know like it was very much a generation of let's go and grab a dinner at a restaurant or takeout or whatever and so I I have people who are literally I really only know how to use the microwave right and and I want to be healthy so how do you know like aside from like going to cooking classes or you know like my son it's so funny because he's he's 16 oh my god he drove for the first time today Lynn let me tell you that's a new that's a new horizon my daughter actually was a worse driver my son's because he does video games he's a pretty good driver so far so good but but anyway um but he will watch YouTube and he will make dinner. He's like, okay, mom, I want to make, I want to try to, he made this amazing lentil soup the other night. He just learned, like, watched YouTube and made the recipe. And, uh, you know, he's following some guy chef who's a real dude. And, you know, these are the dude lentil soup, you know. And it's like, okay, cool, you know, whatever. But um, 
like I was going to say what you're saying about buying something ahead of time, freezing it or having it like the rotisserie chicken or the, um, you know, the even like Trader Joe's or any, you know, like you go in and you can get those, you know, stuffed peppers or whatever. So you aren't cooking them, but but then you're adding something to it. You know, something I did in the pandemic that I I. I, I mean that I got better at at the pandemic was you know we would get we would grab food like Indian food or um, Chinese food and I would instead of using the rice I would use like shredded so I would bring my own stuff from the kitchen because we were getting takeout it wasn't like we were eating there but I would have shredded lettuce be the base for the curry or the um, the uh, you know like the whatever the sauce was or whatever. So I wasn't getting a bunch of rice. Um, if we go and get takeout often, I'll get something and then I'll come home and I'll make a salad or a vegetable to go with it, you know, at the same time. So it doesn't necessarily have to, like you could do a mason jar and get takeout if you don't have time with your family. Yeah. Um, but you're just getting that, like uh, the nutrition and the lighter, the less caloric, you know, it's not all just you know fast food it's it's you're adding some nutrition and you're adding some bulk to it absolutely and and there's no shame in the semi-homemade you know if you're even if it's food assembly which i think is a lot of how hungry girl really started right pull these things together and put them on a plate you know and create from what already exists out there you know it, it was an evolution for us to actually be you know what i mean a lot of us can do a lot of amazing things with food and in the kitchen now that I know I couldn't do 14 years ago. And a true secret is I didn't know how to cook growing up. I wasn't taught by my mother. I love my mother dearly, um, but she has many gifts. Cooking is not one of them. Uh And I, it wasn't until college that I really ever cooked anything at all. And I was a very fly by the seat of my pants, learn as I go kind of person. And that is definitely true. And I've evolved as a developer and as a recipe lover by what is driving me in the moment. So I'm like your son where I was eating a lot of vegan, um, gluten-free foods over the pandemic. And I was turning to stars on YouTube who were making, you know, bacon out of the daikon radish, which oh, wow. was amazing. And it was so good, but I was like, I'm going to watch the video first and then I'm going to choose a bunch of different things. I'm going to see what I can try. And I think that's why it's really fun. If you are a millennial or younger and you're on TikTok and you're watching those videos, like those are great sources of insp- inspiration. You don't have to, there, there are so many magical things that are happening in the world right now and people are able to share it. So it's okay to go on YouTube and find some inspiration or go on TikTok and try that hack. But also know that it's okay if you're just doing some food assembly, especially for most of your meals. Like that is a great way to stay on point with your goals and you know what you're getting, you know? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, definitely. And I think you, it's, I, I mean, you have to stick with it. It is trial and error. You know, you get, I mean, once you say you have your favorite, like I have my favorite go-to, um, you know, I know it takes me 10 minutes to assemble. I got it down. I know the family's going to love it, but it takes trial and error, you know, for every winter recipe that I know to throw together, you know, I had to go through 10 clunkers <laughs> to, um, and have my kids turn their noses up at it. And, uh, yeah, I feel like you start to know to which kind of, and, and it's okay to evolve, you know, that's also a huge thing of it, but you'll start to know who you can turn to and who you can trust for certain recipes. There are some that are just putting it out there, you know, and others that are tested as many times as our, ours are with so many different taste buds on it. And if it actually makes it to the email, into a book, into a magazine, you know it's been tested and tried and true. And I think once you realize where your palate is, where somebody else's is, and you're like, oh, oh, I love that person's stuff. And explore with them, you know, check out everything they have on their blog, check out everything that they're putting out there on Instagram and, and really explore with them and 
be brave in the kitchen. I would say it's not nearly as scary as it seems to be. And I know, I wish I could hold everybody's hand. <laughs> you know? Like if you are nervous, if you are one of the people that are kind of afraid or you just don't cook because no one ever taught you, have some faith. I mean, I'm a recipe developer and no one ever taught me how to cook. That is amazing. Well, and that is really great advice. I And I do say, you know, I think we, we get overwhelmed with a identity uh, you know, like with the shift, I say, you know, we aren't, um, it's not about dieting. It's about, you know, being an apprentice of weight mastery. And I think food is you are also have to think of yourself as an apprentice. You 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 are not going to start out, you know, knowing what to do and throwing it together if you haven't really done it. But you just start one little thing at a time. And um, like you said, great advice. Get curious and find people you like and who would mentor you. Well, so speaking of that, so let's talk about Beachbody because you are a coach with Beachbody. Um, and and I was telling, uh, well, Lynn, I think I ended up on Beachbody because um, uh, I worked with um, the woman who uh, runs Unplug Meditation and I have a bunch of hypnosis um, about weight loss on Beachbody, which is a platform. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about Beachbody. And, and Lynn is... A coach so we were like Lynn was like I saw you on Beachbody I was like I know it's crazy how did I end up on Beachbody but anyway I'm on Beachbody but Lynn you're a coach so tell us about that on Beachbody um yeah I have been a coach for over six years now I'm a star diamond coach so cool. at Beachbody and I love that's another company that has evolved a lot over the time that I've been with them it's amazing but did what you're on is the Beachbody on demand platform it's a digital platform it's actually changing to body very soon. What? Um, B-O-D-I. <laughs> so oh, okay. Gonna, there, there's some really fun things that are happening um, and they're expanding their library even more. They're going to have options for people on bikes. Um, so there's a lot of cool, cool things that are happening. And what I love about it is that it has every type of workout, whether you're prenatal, postnatal, if you love dancing, if you just want to have meditation or yoga and just work on your you know, mental state, which is a hugely important part of this journey, because honestly, like if you're just working on your body and you're not working on your mind too, generally it's not going to, in my experience, it's not going to stick. Um, <laughs> when you're working on the whole package and you're, you're growing as a person and working on your, your physical body at the same time, it's an amazing combination. And they really have a lot of support for that. So there's now also multiple nutrition plans. So whether you just don't know how to count macros and you want to make it easy for yourself. There's a plan for that. There's also one that just really focuses heavily on eating a lot of vegetables, drinking water, and just having really good and positive, you know, mindful habits, which I also love. And I am certified to coach both of those as well. And oh, cool. The whole package is just really incredible it's as much as you want it to be. So there is, it's a total solution as they kind of say, like if you are looking for everything, they have everything, but if you're looking for one thing, they have that one thing too. So there's every type of workout from just strength. If you're a performance athlete, which I was a collegiate athlete. And so that really speaks to me. I love those workout programs. They have really intense ones. Um, but they also have like bar and they also have, like I said, like country line dancing workouts. They have a little bit of everything. It's a lot, a lot of fun to work with and help people kind of navigate that world, figure out where they should start and then where they should graduate through. I love that. So if somebody wanted to check it out, they have, do they have a, a seven day, they have a free trial or, yeah, or they have a 14 day free trial and it is totally free to do for 14 days. Um, they're really amazing. I will say their customer service has just really gotten so amazing over the years. Mm -hmm. They're so good. If you're like, Oh, I forgot that one day I meant to cancel it on, on the Monday or whatever. They're really good. They work with everybody. It's, um, it's really grown as a, as a company. They really value the people that, you know, love Beachbody and they value the people that are willing to give it a try. Yeah. That's so cool. And so if they, um, would you be able to give me a link like that they yeah. could find and then they could find you too on beach? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. cool. Well then, then I'll put that in show notes for sure. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, like my, I, everybody, it seems like is on beach body. My virtual assistant is on beach body. Um, I get, you know, just by having my, 
hypnosis on there. So many people have come through to the Shift Weight Mastery process from Beachbody. Like, it seems like Beachbody is the place where all the cool people are hanging at. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And I, I mean, what I love is, so like I said, I've been an active coach for six years. And the whole time, what we've really done is like build our community. So what makes us a little bit special and my group specifically is I do offer five and seven day menu plans, usually once a month, <laughs> unless life is a little bit too crazy. So usually once a month, um, I'll do like kind of like a like free little challenge, if you will. And that's a lot of fun. We'll all eat the same menu and we all support each other. And there's usually free workouts in there too. And then we also focus hard. Sometimes we'll be like, okay, we're all going to do this program together. And we support each other throughout that journey. And it's just it's become like a little mini family, which was especially good over the last year and yeah, a half. That is um, so awesome. Yeah. Cause you can't go to the, you couldn't go to the gym and some people still don't feel comfortable necessarily going to the gym. And it's a great way to get a killer workout at home and also have people that are cheering you on. Well, I think a lot of people, um, myself included, realize the value of being able to work out consistently in a class situation from home and not having to add a half hour going to the gym, half hour coming home. Like the time saved is incredible. And then, yeah, being able to be at home and especially if your kids are young and not having to have to deal with all of that, but you can still work out while they're there. It's, you know, really, really great. So, and you are offering a free seven day menu plan, um, in the show notes. I will have that link as well. Um, is that what you were talking about a little earlier? Like you, you create these every month or within Beachbody? Um, so actually what I'll do is some of the recipes are my own. Some of them are inspired, you know, by hungry girl or I'll label them if they're actually hungry girl recipes. Okay. Some of them are from the, like Beachbody does have an amazing recipe database. Now they've does, grown okay. so much over the years So some of them are from Beachbody. So it's a little bit of mix and match menus. Sometimes it's a very specific meal plan where you do repeat menus. It kind of depends on what the group collective is generally working on. Sometimes we're like in between programs. So it's a little more flexible. Other times we're working on a very specific program. So it might kind of be tailored to that. But no matter what the the month is and no matter what the theme is, it's always approachable for somebody brand new. And let's be honest, sometimes it's nice to not have to figure out what's for dinner and what's for breakfast. So I do that work for you. I love that. I know. And you are somebody who's great at figuring that out. <laughs> well, thank you. It, this has been so great to see you. And um, I'm so happy you are happy where you are in North Carolina. Um, yeah. yeah. And that your kids are finally going to both be heading off to school. That is, I know it's going to be hard, but at the same time, you're going to be like, oh my God, I've got my time back. I don't know what I'm going to do with seven hours a day. Oh, believe me, you will find out very quickly. (laughs) (laughs) And you will love it. Um, But yeah, no, that's that's great that your kids, I know. And and like I said, your kids are the age my kids were when I think I met you around the age. So, and now, so cherish them because man, it goes fast. I'm telling you, your mm-hmm. kids are going to be driving like mine pretty soon. And I'm not ready for that. Watch your, your pants. <laughs> All right, Lynn, it was lovely to see you. I want you to get to bed because I know it's late East coast time. So um, thank you so much for your time. It was such an honor to speak with you and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, everybody. That wasn't that awesome. Lynn is so cool. Anyway, everybody just take a nice deep breath in and know that we can do this. We can plan. Just let's say it together. We can plan. We can prepare. We can plan. We can prepare. We can do this. Um, And make sure to grab Lynn's free planning guide in the show notes. And again, thank you, Lynn. I just remember meeting you so many years ago. I mean, gosh, I... And, you know, it was before you were a mom, before you were married. I mean, I just, so it's really great uh, seeing how you've evolved um, in the the self-care and health industry, um, you know, just as a practitioner and as somebody who puts it out there to people. So thank you for joining us here today. And for you guys... Let's have an amazing week and let's take some of this planning and preparing and put it into action. Have an amazing week and remember that the key and probably the only key to unlocking the door of the weight struggle is inside you. So keep listening and find it. 
you want to dive deeper into the mindset of long-term weight release, head on over to www.shiftweightmastery.com. That's www.shiftweightmastery.com where you'll find numerous tools and resources to help you unlock your mind for permanent weight release, tips, strategies, and more. And be sure to check the show notes to learn more about my book, From Fat to Thin Thinking, Unlock Your Mind for Permanent Weight Loss.